Hello, precious one. My name is Raku Kusimon, and this is the Ecclesia Project. In fact, I've been enjoying myself on this show, and I also believe that you have been enjoying yourself watching us from home. The previous episode that we've had have been amazing, and today promises to be one of its kind. Today we are talking about the youth and evangelism, and I'm glad to introduce my guest to you or my friends who have joined me today on this podcast as we share ideas on the youth and evangelism. I have with me to my immediate right, Mrs. Deborah. Mrs., yes. you are welcome. Thank you. Wow. And right after Mrs. Deborah is my brother, Enes. Enes was here the last time. Mm. When Enes came the last time, we talked about the greater Accra for Christ crusade. crusade. Yeah. It is greater Accra unleashed crusade, and it is going on with fire. Enes, tell us something small about the crusade even before you go into our topic. Okay. Yeah, so by the grace of God, everything is going on well, and we are uh, winning many souls mm. for God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are actually depopulating the kingdom of uh, Satan. Yeah, and it's 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 massive. It's massive. Mm. If, you, if you should look at the numbers, and uh, everyone is really involved. As mm. we said the other time, everyone is doing his or her part to help propagate the gospel. And what amazed me was that yesterday we had reps from Parliament coming, and the Speaker of Parliament making some bold statements, and I was like, "Hey, Charlie, so perform who?" <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Wow. So today yeah. we are talking about. The youth and evangelism. Auntie Debbie, why do you think evangelism is important to today's youth? I believe evangelism is important because it, it's one of the great commissions of God. Okay. We are supposed to go out there and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, so far as you are a child of God, you have that mandate. That mandate has been given unto you to go out there mm -hmm. and preach just because you are a child just of God. Just because we are a child of yes. God. Oh, okay, I see. So okay. you have to. It's not that you should or you can. Mm -hmm. You have to. So it's not only about the youth, but it's everybody. So it's, it's like something that you can't negotiate. You can't negotiate. But the fact for us, the youth, is because we are energetic. Mm -hmm. We are sure. vibrant. Sure. So when we go out there, we'll be able to draw the people in more than our grandmothers and our grandfathers. Mm -hmm. Because even the word of God says, remember... The Lord your God in the time of your yeah. youth. Uh -huh. So this is the time that we can go out there and do the work of God. Wow. So. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. This is the time for us to go out there and do the work of God. Enes, mm -hmm. let me hear you on this. Okay, so I also believe uh, it gives the youth a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, sense that uh, most of the youth don't really have a sense of direction to their life. But when we engage in evangelism, it helps them build their moral values on certain things and it keeps them moving on a direction because they, they know that I'm for evangelism and this is what I have to mm. uh, study or learn. This, this brings me back to something that um, I heard some time ago that for students, mm. they say that if you go on campus and you want to live a good life as a Christian, the first thing you have to do is that the first day you enter class, just preach. Okay. Try and preach. Because when you do that, they will, they will give you the tag as a sofa. Yes. And when that exactly. tag comes, exactly. when you are about <laughs> doing something that somehow, hey, no, sofa now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, so it even puts you on your toes. So it, it, it's, it's, it's important that we, we, we do that. But okay. what are some of the ways that we can use? like effective ways as a youth. Mm. Probably I may not have the oratory. I wouldn't be able to stand in front of people, massive, like the crusade. I may not even get the chance to go on the platform to go and preach. Yeah. As a young person, how will I be able to do this work of evangelist? Um, it can be done through mini groups. Okay. Like friends can come together yeah. and now go out there and preach. For instance, if let's say we have five friends, Mm -hmm. Someone is good, like oral, the person can speak well. I cannot. This is my first time. But when I watch and I study what my friend is doing, I'll be able to pick it up. So and I, through I, practice, mm. I can also now start preaching to people. Mm. So with group, mini groups, Bible studies, uh, we can use all those means to teach and learn how to mm. evangelize. I see. Mm. I think that, that, that is mentorship. As you look up to someone, 
Uh, in a group, you can be looking up to someone, learning from the person. And gradually, gradually, you also get the spirit to also lead sometime or preach sometime. I would also want mm. to add that trips, mm. like good trips. We, okay. we hardly do that in Church of Faith because it's only when we are going for youth camps and mm. those things. Yeah. But in the church premise, we can have trips. Okay, we are going to Kakum National Park. We are going here. We are going here. That can be a source of which we can invite our friends who are not Christians or mm. who don't know Christ and use that medium to speak Christ to them. So it's like you are inviting them. Okay, let's go and have fun. Let's go and have fun. Yeah, sure. But in the fun process, we will give you Christ. Okay. I remember when you came here the last time, you talked about sports evangelism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You invite yeah, yeah. them. Sure, Come, sure. let's you play invite football. Everyone, yeah. So the more, the, once we are playing the football, mm. I'll give you the word of God. Sure. And it's, it's interesting. Yes. But... I've realized that of late, um, it is difficult to get these young people getting interested in the evangelism. Mm. What could be the reason and how will we be able to uh, spike up their interest in evangelism? Just as you said, it is mandatory. Yeah. It is something that we have to do. Yeah. So if the young person does not have the interest in doing these things, how will you be able to bring his interest into this? Okay, to me, I think we are not making it fun. The youth of today really want everything to be fun. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know. I'm not talking in a sense that we should go out to play. Okay. But then we should make it a, a enticing. We should make evangelism enticing, whereby we can even leave it to our leaders, mm -hmm. the youth, to handle it. It shouldn't be our fathers leading always. We can create groups. Like we have the, the Pentecost Gospel Heralds. Mm -hmm. We are young. We don't have adults. We don't consider whether you are old. We just come for the adults. And we have some who are 12 years old. Okay. And they are part of this team. So if we engage the young ones, giving them the opportunity to also handle things, lead the team, I think it will be very enticing where we make it fun. Like the sports evangelism, like everyone wants to play football. Mm -hmm. So when you invite the youth like this, they are ready to come. Because th other things are taking their attention as well. But don't you think that when, when you go that route, mm. we may miss the focal point. Probably you are inviting us to come and play football. Mm. You have the intent of giving us Christ. But we are coming with a heart that we are coming to play football. So why, how will you be able to manage it in such a way that your attention will not even be drifted from your purpose. I think I, I want to go into this. One thing is, whatever we are doing, mm -hmm. whoever is leading is matured enough or the person has gone through a certain kind of process mm -hmm. to be built, mm -hmm. to be focused on whatever he or she is doing. So even though we are using sports to draw the people in, I am more focused on giving the word of God to the person after the fun is over. Mm. So it will be so, difficult. So, so you will not come in while I'm having the fun. No. And not, don't you also think that probably the fun will not end and your target The will fun leave. will definitely come to an end. You <laughs> cannot play football for 365 days. <laughs> no. It will definitely come to an end. When it comes to an mm. end, uh -huh. the person is tired. Mm -hmm. But the person has enjoyed him or herself. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm giving you the, I'm giving you what you are interested in. Now, listen to me. Okay. You don't have a choice. So it means that you are using the football as an entry strategy. Yes. Okay. Can, can I come in? Come Sometimes in. you can. We give the word even before we start. Mm. So just on the pitch, two teams. We share the word of God before we start. Mm. So even before they enjoy, they, they have fun. We've already given them the word of God, and at the end we are good to go to continue with anything. I also think that probably we may, we may be looking at the evangelism in a different way. It could even be that the jersey that I'm wearing, there's an inscription on it, yeah. Christ loves you. Exactly. And that alone could be a message that can change someone's life. Sure. So yeah, it's not sure. only about the, something like a puppet spew something. Mm, I have to mm, give mm, you the exegesis, mm. give you the, and all those things. But probably... Just a simple Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. Or probably if you are a bobo, probably how you'll be able to handle the situation when such tensions rises mm -hmm. yeah. could be could even be 
a way of evangelizing to somebody. Yes. Now, uh, the interest has come. It is now fun. Mm. All young people want to come on board. Are there some challenges we should expect that as young people we may face while going around this evangelism business? Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Mm. People have the fear of going out there and preaching. Mm -hmm. It's one of the main challenges for the youth. The fear. The fear okay. of going out there. What if I am rejected? What if someone poses a question to me from the Bible and I'm unable to, to answer? Mm -hmm. So before you go out there, you have to prepare yourself. Okay. Know your Bible. Sure. Know sure, what the sure. Bible is saying. But have you not met an unbeliever <laughs> who knows the Bible more than you? Oh, why not? Okay. There, there are people who are born in, in the church or they know Christ, but mm -hmm. something has drawn them out. Okay. Yeah, so for you to get that person back in, that person will challenge you. Mm. So you would have to know the word of God. There was mm. an example of a friend of mine. People were having like a banter in and out. Mm. Then they saw the guy. They said, Osoto, please come, 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 come. What is the Bible saying about this? So at the moment, if my friend didn't have the right word of God to now bring peace between whatever was going on, what do you think would have happened? Mm. Because, oh, we are friends of him, so we knew him. Yeah. Huh. So the, the fear of rejection is one of the things that blocks people from going out there. Huh. And also not knowing the word of God enough. So we have to prepare. When, when, he said, to when he said the fear of rejection, <laughs> something just came in my mind. Like my brother, be that I know, who saw this lady and was interested in this lady. Uh. <laughs> he wanted to come in. Oh, okay. So I wanted to add up. Yeah, there is a fear of rejection. And the, the, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Some people will reject you. Uh -huh. But you shouldn't you make uh, that uh, rejection shouldn't be the main thing that will prevent you from going out there okay. to preach. Because no matter what you do, you've encountered so many people who are not even ready to listen even to Even Jesus us. Christ was rejected. Exactly. So who, who you, are you? <laughs> you were rejected, you? yeah. All right. Now, um, talking about uh, the evangelism and making it fun, you realize that in time past, hmm. our fathers, our forefathers used to have some ways that they used to do evangelism. Like dawn broadcasting, mm -hmm. uh, bus market evangelism, evangelism, and all those. Things. Now that we are talking about making it fun using other mediums, do you think we should boot out those methods, or how will we be able to bring those methods, like mm -hmm. bringing the Old Testament and the New Testament together? You, you can't boycott the old because the old is a basis for you to build upon with the mm, new. Sure. So what we have to do is to marry the two. Exactly. Bring in social media but still maintaining the old ways of doing evangelism. Marry the two so that we all come into a consensus. Mm. Don't do this one too much. Don't do this one too much leaving it because bear in mind we are not also only going out to bring in the youth. We are mm. bringing in all the caliber of people, all the ages all the generations. So still people are old and they don't know Christ. Okay. People are young and they don't know Christ. We are trying to bring all these groups of people together. Yeah. So we have to marry the two ways, the old and the new. The mm. social media, using TikTok, um, Facebook, whatever. Yeah. Add it to whatever is already existing and we'll go out there. Mm. Okay, you come in before I... Okay, so I think uh, we should blend the two. Mm -hmm. But I think that it depends on your, your purpose of you preaching. Okay. Sometimes you can just propagate the gospel by not bringing the souls to church. And sometimes you can have the purpose of bringing the souls to church. And that one, I think the one-on-one -on -one evangelism is important. Market evangelism, car evangelism, you meet these people from different places. So how can you bring them? Mm. Even after preaching the gospel, how, how you just you leave them. To follow up, follow on, up them. on them. You just propagate and then you leave them. But one on one evangelism, you are bringing the person because you met the person in the community where you are. You want to bring the person back to church. Before we go, let me let me ask this: hmm. Should the purpose be bringing the people to church or giving them Christ? Giving them Christ. However, after giving them Christ, <laughs> they have to be rooted, mm -hmm. and in being rooted, they have to be. Um, 
they have to associate themselves with a particular denomination in order to grow. Okay. So after giving you the, you've accepted Christ, so what then? You go back to your ways and still live? No. You have to be associated with a certain kind of community. And that is where now bringing them into the, the church. church. But I also believe uh, the, the focal point should be giving them Christ. But it is not everybody who gets to discipleship, to do mm. a follow-up and all. Because there are places you go, you don't know anyone. You yeah. don't get support from the local people. You preach to the person and follow-up becomes a problem. Sometimes you meet them at a place where they are not staying. Mm. So how can you get a person for uh, okay. discipleship? You won't get the person. So I think uh, if you are looking at it in that sense, it should be two. The first thing is giving the person Christ. Mm -hmm. And the second should be uh, making sure that the person becomes grounded in, in Christ. Okay. A little to add to it. Uh, usually when we go for crusades, we can say that, okay, um, so one person will beg join the Pentecost, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, it's a Pentecost for the choir. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, be a bell. Perhaps there's no Pentecost in that community. There is Methodist, there is Presby. Mm. You can still join that. Are they up there? You see, that conversation probably. It should, it should <laughs> come going, yeah. What is the assurance that these people will go to the church? We're going to go into that conversation <laughs> another time. But before we go, should every evangelism result in soul winning? Should, should after 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 everything, should you expect that you should win a soul? No. To me, I don't think you should. And you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> let him explain. Then I'll come back. <laughs> All right. Let's. let's no, no, in. because uh, even though the Bible says that it is the will of God for everyone to come into His saving mm -hmm. grace, though, but uh, our purpose is to let people know about Jesus, the okay. good news. So it is not necessarily that everybody you preach to should accept Jesus. Even Jesus spoke to people. The Pharisees, they didn't accept his message. Mm. So uh, it is important for them to know about Christ. But the decision to follow Jesus depends on them. Uh -huh. So it is not by force. Some people, when they preach, they want you to accept Jesus by, by, fire, by, by force. fire by force. They want you to accept Jesus. But I don't think it should be that way. Mm. The purpose is to preach Jesus for them to know about Christ. Okay. Now, before I answer, I want you to pose the question again. <laughs> so, my question was Should every evangelism mm. result in so winning? I'll say yes. Okay. Because the main reason for us going out there to preach the gospel mm -hmm. is to win a soul for Christ. Okay. And the Bible is also making us understand that whatever word that is sent out should accomplish a, a particular purpose. purpose. And the purpose is for the souls to come to Christ. Mm. So every evangelism must result, even if it's one soul. There has so to then, be what happens? Soul. What happens if <laughs> that result does not come? You do it again. You do it again. Yes. How? You continue <laughs> to evangelize. Yeah. So you can't say because I didn't win a soul in this one. I will stop. No. No, what? I totally agree with what she's saying. Mm -hmm. But then the decision to come to Jesus, give my life to Jesus, depends on the soul. That one depends on the soul. But here is the case that, um, so after I've gone, why am I going in the first place? It's to win a soul. So if the purpose is to win a soul, mm -hmm. then I, I think I'm siding with Debbie that uh, every evangelism should should and this is the situation the you preached. Mm -hmm. And the soul has received your message, but mm -hmm. the person is not willing. What will you do? You see, the you condition the person. of coming to Christ mm -hmm. does not depend on the person. Mm -hmm. It depends on the work of the Holy Ghost. Okay. So if the Holy Ghost convicts the person, mm -hmm. the person now comes into repentance. Mm -hmm. That's when the person will come. Okay. Even if you have a hardened heart, the Lord himself knows ways and means to get your heart softened. <laughs> I believe sometimes God works on them, though. Mm -hmm. The message will go without fulfilling its purpose. But at that moment, someone can have the conviction, but may not be ready to give his or her life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. At that moment, you can call for souls. Who is ever, who, who are you willing to give your life to Jesus? Come, if you are willing, but come. Have you ever gone for a crusade or gone for evangelism and you call for souls and no soul comes? Yeah. Yeah, that's, we've experienced that's, that's it. That's my first. Mm. It doesn't mean the word of God has not been preached or the purpose of it has not been fulfilled. 
it will definitely, sometimes God can work on the soul for a while. Okay. And the yeah. person will just walk in and give his or her life. But at that moment, sometimes, there have been so many instances. We didn't mm. get a soul. So, so if, if I'm understanding, it could be that you were just sent to go and plant the seed. Probably someone will go and water it some other time. And then probably another time it will just be. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> then, then, then it means that the end results mm. have been achieved. Yeah. Even though it was not in your presence. Yeah. Exactly. But then um, this one, I'll, I'll leave it for my audience. <laughs> what do you also think? Do you think that every evangelism mm. should end up in soul winning? I'll come back and read your comments probably some other time. Okay, so before we go, Ernest, what are your closing remarks? Okay, so I would say that evangelism is really important in our days. And not only in our days, but really important. That is why Jesus commissioned us to go out there. So the youth, let's go out with confidence knowing well that we are part of something greater because evangelism is a lifetime event that changes the life of people. To my brothers and sisters out there, let's go out with confidence. This is, yeah. what are your last words? Um, to the youth, I want to share a scripture. First Timothy chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 12 and 13. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech mm. in conduct in love in faith and purity until i come devote yourself to the public reading of scripture to preaching mm. and to teaching so my last words will be before you go out there to preach the word of god to anybody pray prepare yourself Plan what you are going out there to do, and the Lord Himself will take over. Mm. Prepare, plan. I like the sequence. You have to prepare, you have to plan mm. before you hope that God will come in. Because some people will go out <laughs> there hoping that when they get there, the Holy Spirit will tell them what to say. <laughs> no. But it is important that you mm. plan. I believe that. Today's edition has been a blessing to you. If today happens to be your first time on this channel, kindly subscribe, turn on the post notification so that whenever I release a new video, you get the first hand notification. My name is Brock Chris Simon. I will see you another time. This is the Ecclesia Project. God bless you.